as we look at this parable, one of the first things to notice is what is the good crop being grown? Wheat. And so when we hear about wheat, that should point to bread and to the Eucharist automatically. The same thing with grapes and wine. We should see a Eucharistic connection with that very quickly. So we see here the enemy has sown uh, weeds in the field. And so, of course, Jesus tells us the weeds are the bad people and the wheat is the good people. So at the end, we see the weeds are collected to be burned. And then you see this beautiful line, gather the wheat into my barn. Well, we hope that's us. We want to be the wheat because we're receiving the bread of life, hopefully worthily and regularly. And so that is the life of Christ in our our body and soul. We're receiving the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ in the in the the, the um, sacrament of Holy Communion. So so the wheat um, is what what God uses, and it's interesting because. Uh, the, the wheat and the grapes, uh, that's the step that God does. But then both of them have to be processed. The grapes, you know, have to be, you know, processed into wine, and the wheat has to be processed into bread. So the result of bread and wine is the result of the labor of both God and man working together. So God provides the grace for us in our soul and we need to take our free will and use it properly that we can bring uh, a harvest of more grace to God. So it's interesting the way the symbols that Jesus uses in his stories play out. Uh, and so we also see this mention about the parables to the people. Um, so, so you think, why is Jesus doing that? Well, part of the problem is that people uh, who have the wrong spiritual disposition within their hearts, the more truth you tell them uh, and the more they turn against it, the, the more it's just causing judgment to come upon them. It's a sad thing. So we need to make sure that our hearts are open to the Word of God, are open to be willing to sacrifice for the love of God and neighbor through the Ten Commandments and the 14 works of mercy. And that's really where the divide is. Because lots of people are like, oh, I want to serve God. I want to, I want to follow Jesus. And then when they find out, you know, guess what? The Ten Commandments may cramp your worldly style. You've got to change something. You're like, what? What? And that's the moment of decision, you know? So keeping the Ten Commandments can be a radical thing when we realize you know, what they are and what they tell us to do and what they tell us not to do. <clears throat> so as we look at this story, we see, you know, the seed was sown, the weeds were sown by, by the devil. And you're like, what, what does that mean? Well, it says the weeds are the children of the evil one. And so the enemy who sowed them is the devil. So, so how does that work? Well, it's sort of the opposite of the way God works. The word of God, the word of truth and life and love in the, in the scripture and the tradition of the church comes to us. And then there's also the words of evil that are lies, spiritual lies. We hear them in the media. We hear lies about what a family is going against what's in Genesis as created by God in, in the beginning. We hear lies about the children in the womb, you know, uh, are they children or, or not? You know, so the world attempts to deny the life of the child in the womb. So there's all these lies. So the, there's the gospel of life that comes from Jesus and the gospel of death, which is often broadcast through the media, telling us things that are lies that will, that will turn us from wheat into weeds. And we don't want to do that. We have to be careful about what is the source of of the information that guides our life. What is it that we believe in? Do we believe in the word of God or do we put faith in the word of men? And so uh, we need to be careful what, what we are following. So the angels come at the end and they're gonna separate the weeds from the wheat. 
So we see here this ending. Um, uh, the angels will, will come and cast out of the kingdom all those who cause others to sin and all evildoers. So that's kind of a two-part thing that uh, gives us some interesting understanding. So there's the evildoers that do sin on their own, but then their sin goes to others. They cause others to sin in addition to their own sin. And so we need to do the opposite. We need to be working on our salvation to get ourselves to heaven, but also when we can, when God puts us in a position to maybe be able to help some others get to heaven. And so, you know, if we are true, humble servants of God, those who lead lives of prayer and obedience, then God will help us. He will help us to, to make it to his kingdom, and he will use us to help others to the kingdom. And so the reverse is true for the evildoers and the weeds. You know, a weed pretty much, I'm not, I'm not much on gardening. I don't know a lot, know a lot about weeds, you know, but I'm, I know they're, they're a pain in the neck. I have some that grow in my yard, and i got to kill them. And I'm not really good at growing things. I once had this bright idea to plant three apple trees of different varieties at my house, and I thought, wow, they'll get big and I'll get apples. What could go wrong? Well, I found out. So apparently, my trees were mature enough to give me some nice big apples, and, and the ones that the insects didn't destroy, the squirrels stole. So I got aggravated, and I got my chainsaw out, and that was the end of my apple orchard. So uh, that's kind of what God's going to do here with the, with the weeds, you know. So here then we see uh, uh, the horrible punishment of being thrown into the furnace, and then it says the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. So the idea of shining like the sun, well, that sounds pretty neat to me, but the idea is that if you read the first letter of John, among the definitions of God, it says God is love. It also says God is light. Jesus says he is the light of the world. And light is often used as analogy for uh, truth in the scripture. So what does light do? Well, light does a lot for us. Without light, you don't know where you're going. Fortunately, we've got light. We've got the sun shining through the windows. We've got the, the artificial light that man made, and we can see where we're going. We can see what's going on. But if, if it was uh, complete darkness, <laughs> we wouldn't be able to do anything. So the light of God's truth shines in our soul and gives us faith, hope, and love, and it guides us in the truths of God guides us to prayer and obedience and so that's the beauty of that light so God is light and scripture says you know Jesus says I am the light of the world and then he also says you are the light of the world what does that mean well it means to the extent that we let Christ's light flow within our soul with his grace and his truth and his love and we are humble servants of prayer and obedience to the extent there that light will shine through us onto others and spread the kingdom of God and again, I'm not much on how gardens work, but I know they need light to grow. And so water and light, two wonderful things. And scripture uses those uh, for analogies. We see the, the living water that Christ gives to the Samaritan woman, and we see the light of the world coming through Christ. So, so beautiful analogies. And, and the wheat, you know, that line always sticks in my head here. Gather the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. What is the barn? That's the kingdom of heaven. And so we want to be that wheat. Jesus says, I am the living bread come down from heaven. We want to consume that. It's the fruit of the cross. The fruit of the cross is the tree of life, and, and, the, and, and the fruit of the cross is the body and blood of Christ. So let's do our best to spend the week working hard through prayer and obedience to become worthy of receiving our Lord, who is the bread of life.